It is a beautiful spring morning. It's April 27th. Uh, it's around 8.30 and it's about 48 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm in zone 6B. So I don't get to start my summer garden until a little bit after Mother's Day. So around May 10th, I can plant out my summer garden. So I have a lot of my tomato seed starts up here. I've pretty much been leaving these outside for about a month now. So they're nice and hardened off. These are just tomatoes and peppers I've grown from seed with the exception of this Florence fennel here. They're doing great. We did have a freeze warning about, I think it's probably been about three days ago now, maybe four days ago. And so I had to move all of these inside and keep them protected overnight. But fortunately, I think the temperatures only dropped into the upper 30s. So that was good. I also moved in all of my containers that I had out uh, from of my garage. I had to put those back in my garage. And those are some containers that are a little bit more um, frost sensitive. So I had to protect those, but I am slowly moving up some of my containers to my deck here. Um, of course, I have the chives here about to burst into bloom. They're just beautiful. And lime thyme right down here is looking very nice. Along with my new herb this year, this will be chervil. So this is the first time I've grown it. I'm growing that from seed. And this is a flat leaf Italian parsley. And I showed that in my last um, gardening video, and I was explaining that the outside leaves will tend to yellow and fall off and down to the soil level when it's uh, transplanted out, as do most plants, but not to be concerned. And so, as you can see, it's uh, done beautifully, and I've actually been clipping a lot of that and using it. So it would be much more full now if I hadn't been clipping away at it all, all the time. And these are some green onions. And then I succession planted green onions, so I have some more over there in that container. They're up. Um, these I actually started in January in a little cup inside my house, and then I just divided them down and put them in this container out here in March. Okay, so here are all my summer vegetables, peppers, and some flowers, some nasturtiums, and um, they're all doing great. So now what I want to show you is what I did in the garden this past weekend. Okay, so I have several things I want to show you, and so we'll head down to the garden. I want to talk about uh, a Mother's Day gift idea, or maybe even for a grandmother. I want to talk about succession planting, how you can also have more plants in your square foot garden just from sowing seeds and then thinning them out, and we'll talk about slug and cabbage worm control, and also moving perennials, especially like strawberries. Uh, just trying to make more plants with something that you already have growing. Okay, so let's head down there. Okay, it's a beautiful morning, and so I want to go ahead and walk through the garden and show you my spring garden. This is my favorite uh, garden of all. The summer, you get so many insects, and there's it's just so hot, but I do love peppers and tomatoes, but I want to make sure to show you here this garden because a lot of times I think gardeners overlook it. So, most of the plants that you're going to see in here, I direct sowed. In other words, I just put that seed right in the soil, and it grew. And I did that in March. I see it was around March 9th. So, it was about two months before I can do my what's called my summer planting of tomatoes and peppers. I will include a link, too, to what you can grow in your spring garden. If you didn't do it this year, you can do it next year and plan for it then. A lot of times, when we are a new gardener, we just want to focus on those tomatoes because those tomatoes are good when they're fresh picked from your garden. But there are so many other things that we can grow. So I'll tell you a quick story over here before we get started since Mother's Day is coming up. These little stepping stones right here um, were made for me about six years ago. And it's five and six years ago. My husband asked me, he said, what would you like for Mother's Day? And I said, um, well, I would really kind of like some little stepping stones for my garden. And maybe the kids could make them. So off he went. He packed up the kids and went off to the craft store, which is huge for my husband. He is not a crafter at all. <laughs> so he brought them home and they got busy making these little cement stepping stones. And so they have their little handprints in them. So um, that was... Tommy's, and then over here uh, is Jay's, and his handprint kind of faded out, it looks like, a little bit, but anyway, um, the second year, the same thing happened. He said, what would you like? I said, I want some more garden stones for my 
um, my garden, some more stepping stones, and off he went. And then the third year, he just gave me a gift certificate for the spa. So anyway, there's the little story of Mother's Day, and a great gift, I think. So a lot of memories there. Anyway, so what I want to start by doing is to talk to you about succession planting, and that's one of the things I did this weekend. Um, I just showed you that I succession planted some green onion in my container garden. But I also did it in my square foot garden because it's time to go ahead and get that done. So let me show you my clip on that and then we'll come back to my garden tour. I'm going to do some succession planting. Okay, I've already planted all of these in my garden. I've planted carrots, I've planted spinach and um, green onions, okay? And they're all at different stages of growth. But I want to go ahead and get some more started because those are going to be gone in about probably four weeks. Most of the carrots will be harvested, the spinach will be harvested, and the green onion I'll be well on my way of using it. So in order to have what's called a continual harvest, I need to go ahead and get some of these seeds in the ground. And then in about two or three more weeks, I'll plant them again, okay, until the temperatures are such that they won't grow very well for me. And you know, all of your little packets are gonna have on there how many days to harvest. So this is 45 to 50 days. I'll still have mild temperatures into June in my area. So the spinach will do well. As a matter of fact, last year I planted this uh, hybrid spinach in June and harvested beautiful spinach in July. But that was in another garden. So I've been real impressed with this. And So I'm going to go ahead and get all these in the ground. I'm going to succession plant these. Um, two other things that I did this week uh, were that I planted, um, I already planted some carrots, but I planted a different variety. This is a small little gourmet uh, carrot, and I'm going to put these in my um, raised bed because they really like a loose soil. The other ones I planted um, were multicolored carrots, and I planted those just throughout the garden. Um, so I'm going to have a pretty good supply of carrots this year. And then I also succession planted cilantro because I love cilantro. And let me show you that real quick. Here is an example of some cilantro mixed in with a little bit of dill that is doing very well. And um, I planted some in my container garden this week also and it's not up yet. But it takes a long time for cilantro to germinate, sometimes two weeks. So that's why I um, keep planting it every two weeks. I'll show you my most mature plant and it's in another area. Okay, here's my best plant and um, I actually start harvesting cilantro early. I start pulling off those outer leaves and using them until it looks like it's about to bolt and those of you who know what bolting is like, it's just the middle of that um, plant will start to produce very tiny leaves and then it starts to produce flower buds and it goes to flower and then it produces a seed. Those of us, uh, if you've watched my video, I'll include a link to where I used the seed. I harvest, I dried it and then I harvested it, then I toasted it, then I ground it and I used it for coriander in a dish I was making. So you can use, a, I use the root as, for the cilantro as well for a stock that I made for that particular dish. So you can use all your parts of the cilantro plant. I love to use the leaves, but of course you can use the stalks as well. Okay? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get busy um, succession planting those things I showed you. Okay, so I measured off my little area. I'm gonna plant spinach first, and I'm gonna put nine per square foot. When I'm planting in my square foot garden, I like to use just little, like, cooking gloves. I think it's, um, a lot easier than using a bulky glove. It's just hard to deal with the little tiny seeds. Okay, so nine per square foot. Now, if my eyesight was better, <laughs> I could probably see where I put all these things. I think I'm getting them, and if not, what I like to do is just come back over and sprinkle some soil on top, because they should be down about half an inch anyway, so that'll be good. As long as I don't disturb any other seedlings around. There we go. That's my spinach. I'm going to give it a marker. Okay, whenever I water seeds, I like to use a little child's watering can with the 
a little sprinkle land on it, okay, instead of something real forceful. And I used various different sizes of watering cans throughout uh, the stages of growth for um, different plants, and I'll leave a link to that video where I covered that if you'd like to see it, okay? So let me go ahead and give it a marker, and we'll water this in real good. Even though I think I'm going to be getting rain this evening, I'm going to just do that because that will remind you to do it as well. Okay, now I'm going to do carrots. Okay, so now I'm going to do carrots. And this is just a little uh, thing that I designed to plant carrots because it's so they're so tedious to plant. Actually, it's more tedious to go back and thin your carrot seedlings than it is to just plant them with the appropriate spacing to begin with. Okay, so um, you need to have your carrots three inches apart. This, these are kind of old carrot seeds, but I use old seeds all the time for some things. Carrots seems to do fine for me. Spinach, you need really, I found you need to have fresh seeds for spinach. I've had a hard time with spinach before. Okay, so I'm going to sprinkle out a few seeds here. And I'm going to go over this planting tool with you in a carrot growing video. I hope to upload here very soon. I'm almost finished with it. And I'm going to put two, and since these seeds are kind of old, I'm going to probably put three in each uh, area. You can plant 16 carrots per square foot, okay? And I'm planting the little finger in a square foot garden because um, this soil is very loose, and I want them to be pretty. So they'll grow straight down. Little finger is more of a straight growing carrot versus a cone shaped. Cone shaped carrots can get in that clay soil a little better. It can handle a compacted soil a little bit better, but uh, these little fingers are straight and they have more of a rounded tip and so they get really tiny. So I want to see if I can get these a nice shape this year. A couple of years ago I grew them in the clay soil and they just came out all kind of crazy shapes. I don't know what I was doing, I guess. <laughs> Okay, so I'll go ahead and finish this up, and then we're going to mark them and water them in. Now, I will just cover the top with a little bit of soil. You're supposed to plant carrots about a half inch deep. Quarter inch, half inch. That should be fine. Give them a marker, little finger, put on here at 65 days on this package is to 65 days from the date of sowing. Read your packet to find out how many days you can expect to harvest that uh, carrot. And there's other ways you can find out. But this is not a carrot growing video. I'm doing that for you in another video. So there's my succession planting of carrots. Okay, right here are my green onions. They're up and doing pretty well, and I have some really nice ones in my container garden. So now it's time to plant some more. I haven't even harvested my first planting yet, but I want to go ahead and get these things going. I'm supposed to thin these to stand three inches apart, but I don't really do that with my green onions. I just pull a bunch of them at one time, and I'll take care of them when I get inside. To have them grow real nice, you do want to thin them. Okay, so I'm going to just try to sprinkle them up from high above and they will spread out better. If you try to do it too too close, they just kind of all fall in one area. So try to go up high, and even if these get into another square, I'm okay with that. Okay, because they're just, they're not gonna take up a lot of nutrients or anything like that. Okay, and now we'll cover it up. Cover these up about a quarter inch deep in soil. And water them in. And I gotta give them a marker. Okay, I didn't mark this off. This is just not accurate as far as the 12 by 12, but it's okay. All right, there we go. And I'm gonna come down here and make sure that this stays nice and moist until they germinate, especially the carrots. You've got to keep them very moist for them to germinate. And uh, there you have it. All right, so. Okay, so my next chore was that I thinned out some plants in my square foot garden, but instead of just tearing out plants and throwing them away, uh, I wanted to show you an easy way to get plants started, uh, and especially spring plants. And this is something I do every year, especially with kale. But this year I 
um, did repeaty and all you do and I'll show you the clip is you just um, what I did in March is I sowed a lot of seeds over here for something called rapini and then I, I let those grow pretty well and then on Saturday this past Saturday I went ahead and I thinned them out and I put them in other places in my garden and you can do this with a lot of different plants you can just in your square foot garden especially when it's in the cool season you can spread out seeds for things like um, let's say Brussels sprouts and cabbages different kind of cabbages your kale um, some of your herbs like cilantro doesn't always transplant real well but I've done it before and I moved it around and it was it bolted a little quicker than it would have if I just left it alone but it, it did fine too just loose good soil like you have in a square foot garden makes it real easy to just uh, throw you some seeds down and then thin them out later so that was where I thinned them from and I'll show you how I did that Okay, this is one of the reasons I absolutely love a square foot garden because the soil is just beautiful and you can always just move things around very easily. So right here, I direct sowed some kale seeds and you see I have two that's germinated and they are too close together. Well, this, uh, because the soil is so nice, it's going to be very easy for me to just take one of these up and put it over to the side and space them out accordingly instead of having to, you know, trim them off and throw them away okay um, sometimes in clay soils they're just it's just too hard to do that so I'll just dig down here I have a little um, grapefruit spoon it has a little bit of a serrated edge on the end so I like to use this a lot for gardening and I gotta be real gentle okay nice little plant now I have a, a little transplant that I can put over here Okay, so we'll just put it right here. I'm going to mix in just a little bit of compost with it. And you can do this with a lot of different plants. Um, not carrots. Carrots really need to kind of be pulled out, or I mean cut out. Um, but you can pretty much do this with a lot of different plants and we'll water it real good. I always like to water anything that I've transplanted to help it along from a, any kind of transplant shock it might experience. Okay, there you go. Okay, over here in this corner of the bed I have a lot of rapini that have done very well but they're too close together also and so what I'm going to do is take out one of the middle ones there to kind of help them along. Um, it's really a little bit more mature than I would prefer to transplant at this point um, but I'm going to go ahead and do it and I don't really have much to lose because just taking that one plant out here in the middle is going to help the other two on each side do much better. I'm going to put it back in the ground no deeper than it already was. And I'll water it in. Okay, it sounds like the neighbors are out enjoying their yards and getting them in shape. So I've got a little bit of background noise, but I'm going to actually go ahead and do all of these rapinis as well. I have some extra space in a couple of areas in the garden, so I'm going to transplant these and thin them out. Okay, there's what it looks like now. I thinned it out pretty good. I think I probably took out a total of uh, maybe about six plants. Let me show you where I put them. Okay, there's one. Don't let that concern you if it starts to fall over a little bit. It's just got a, a going through a shock. And um, this is in a nice shady area over here. We should be getting some rain. Um, I don't know how it will do in about three to four hours worth of sun every day. That's why I scattered them all throughout the garden. I know that they will do well in the sun exposure of those two beds over there because I grew it last year. I'll include a link of when I harvested it. It's a really pretty plant, the rapini. Okay, I put a few more over here as well. And 
this is really shady here this hardly gets any sun but I put two over here you can see I had a lot okay so just to recap in March I sprinkled out a lot of seeds for rapini over here and I just let them come up naturally and I was intending that I would probably thin them out um, and I think I ended up taking out just a few um, early on in March after they germinated and so as in April they have really started to come up nicely and my intention was to do what I just did was, was to just move them out and put them in other places in the garden see this makes my work a lot easier as a gardener because I didn't have to tend to them taking them in and out of my house putting them under lights making sure that the conditions were right for growing I just sprinkled my seeds out and then I just moved them throughout the garden again it's also hard to do this if you have like a clay soil the roots just um, don't like it as much being transferred out of a clay soil or a real hard compacted soil into a hard compacted soil okay now it's been two days and right there is where I moved one okay you can see it's looking a lot better than it did in the picture that I showed you and then that one's gotten eaten up, eaten up a little bit by something I think maybe maybe not I forgot what it looked like when I put it in there here's a couple more I stuck those in the ground it's a lot easier to take it from a square foot garden and put it in your native soil than it is to take it from your native soil and put it in your square foot garden bed okay okay now we'll look at slug and cabbage worm control uh, this cabbage looks pretty good here okay this is Napa cabbage it's one of my favorites um, however I do have a slug problem and you may have already even noticed that I have some holes in my rapini I also have some holes in a couple of my other cabbage plants right over here and this is slug a slug problem I also happen to have cabbage worms okay and I will show you how I address that issue and I do this every um, every spring because I have especially if I put cabbage over here I know that I'm gonna have a problem because slugs are really bad over here and so this year I've discovered that I also have cabbage worms um, and they're liking really loving the cabbage right now <laughs> so that one look at how they're really much in a way on there so let me go ahead and show you how I control that Okay, the first step to identifying your problem, if you notice something like this on your cabbage, is to check down in the very center of your cabbage. Usually, if it's a slug, they're going to hide down in here. Okay, this is where I found my slugs. So just take a look down in here, the base. I think the like to hide down here during the day or that they just like the new growth now these are just tree seeds right here that are falling off my tree let's see what we can find there's a slug okay not much fun and he's got a big hole he's been eating that whole leaf right there he's eating it completely look at that that rascal all right so there's the slug now I know what to do and I know that I can go through and spread my sluggo out okay I'll show you that in just a second okay so now if Napa cabbage is something that you want to grow okay I, this is the third year I've grown it the first year I grew it it looked like this so it grew into a beautiful head of cabbage and then I pulled it out I thought I'm not eating that and I composted two of the heads and I thought when I got to the third one I said well I'll take a look inside and just see what it looks like well do you know the inside was absolutely beautiful only the outside leaves had um, damage on them and there were no slugs or anything on the inside as a sluggo is what I like to use and I always transfer my uh, just different things into mason jars or any kind of jars that I have in my house I'll just put the label on here I'll tape it on and this is how I like to store things to keep them you know nice and dry so I have my labeled instructions on here and all I'm going to do is take a little bit of the sluggo and apply it around now when it takes about three to six days for it to work on the slugs it's called sluggo if you want to try to use that and I'm gonna go ahead and put this around all of my cabbages and rapini 
Now on this cabbage plant, um, the problem is not slugs, but it's this cabbage worm. So these are the, I pulled one off of here already. These are the other two. So with cabbage worms, I'm just going to spray with a product called BT, and that should correct the problem. The BT will destroy the worm's digestive tract, and so they will stop feeding, and they will die, and then I will get to eat the cabbage and not them. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and spray this cabbage with, um, with BT. Okay, BT is usually pretty easy to find at your garden center, so just follow the directions for mixing. And if you can get good at mixing bottles that have measurements already on the sides, that is great. Okay, so just go in here, we'll spray all the leaves. Anywhere those worms might be feeding, that's where you'll spray, especially down in the center. They love new green growth. So two years ago, I thought that I would be creative and develop a way that I could keep the cabbage moth off of my broccoli because I was just tired of seeing those worms on there and I wasn't really staying on top of spraying with the BT, which works, but I just wasn't staying on top of it. So I went to the Dollar Tree, I picked up one of these little hampers and I turned it upside down and used it as a netting to uh, protect the plant and I pinned it down to the ground. Well, it did keep the cabbage moth off of my plant. You know, if you're new to gardening, that cabbage moth lays its egg on your plants and that egg hatches and it's a little tiny worm. So that's what we don't want. Well, it did work. Like I said, it kept the cabbage moths away, but it also kept the sun off of my plant. It was way too shady at that point. So even though it's a cool season vegetable, it still needs to have sun. So I'm back to spraying with BT. I just know to keep that bottle in my garden and to spray regularly. Uh, I will leave a link to that video if you'd like to check it out. However, um, I do not recommend using the hamper because for me it didn't work. <laughs> it just, like I said, it just had it provided way too much shade on my plant. So, all right, so let's get back to the rest of the video. Also, if you find that you have to spray a lot in your garden, try to find like a little shepherd's hook or something and just put your spray bottle there so whenever you visit your garden, you can uh, give your plants a little spray. That helps remind me to do so. And so anyway, that's my main issue right now with what I'm treating in my garden uh, are slugs and cabbage worms. As long as your temperatures are not too cold, if you're not, uh, if they're not freezing, you can just leave your bottle in your garden. If it gets too hot, you need to go ahead and start taking it inside as well. But right now, when it's spring like this, it's perfect to just leave it in your garden. Okay, here are my strawberry plants. And I think I touched on this in my last gardening video. I talked a little bit about this strawberry plant that I grew, uh, actually planted for the first time. I think it's it was two years ago, so this is its third year's growth, and it's just been sending out runners everywhere. They've just been taking over this bed, which I love because that's those are all new plants for me. As a matter of fact, I've been moving this plant, um, some of the runners, uh, down to another garden. So let me show you real quick here. This is the original plant. Okay, and by the way, it has a lot of little um, blossoms underneath here. So I hope, hope to get a lot of strawberries this year. I always get a one or two, but I, something else eats them, and I haven't really been able to enjoy them. But if I have enough plants, maybe I'll be able to enjoy some strawberries this year. So basically, you know, it just sends off a little uh, runner. There's a runner coming off of this one right here. And what will happen is that little tip will root down into the ground, and it will grow a new plant. Okay, so like this one. This is a new plant from that other plant. It's got a lot of nice new green growth in the middle. The runners just keep shooting out, making new plants. Okay, so what I've been doing is digging these up, like I said, and taking them to another garden where we actually own that property. We rent where we are now, and so um, there um, I'm trying to make it more of a perennial garden because we, we don't live there, and um, I want it to just be an area where I can go and I don't really have to tend to the plants too much and they just grow when they want to. So this is one of the things I'm growing there. And I'll show you some of the other things that I moved, uh, which include garlic chives, uh, an echinacea plant, and a radicchio. So those went to my garden and I'll show you that real quick.
Okay, right here are my strawberries. They are doing beautifully. They're already setting fruit, so I'm real happy about that. This will be the third year's growth for these strawberries. And I only planted one plant right there. And it has sent off runners all through the garden. It didn't send off too many runners last year. That was the second year, but this year it has just taken over. So I'm loving that. Right here in the middle, that's echinacea that I transplanted, I think, in early April, maybe late March. It's doing very nice. Okay, so what I'm going to do today, and I've already been doing this, but I didn't show you guys. Um, I am going to move some of the strawberry plants that have been produced by the runners into my other garden. I'm heading out there tomorrow, so I want to take some of these with me. I wouldn't do this if, it, if I was going out there next week or something, but since I'm leaving tomorrow, I'm going to take a few with me and they are doing very well in my other garden which is a much cooler climate those of you who are new to my channel i have about five different gardens and so the other one is by a cold river and it's in a higher elevation and so i'm going to take a few of these strawberry plants with me now for those of you who do square foot gardening um, i'll try to if i can leave a link to my first um, season of growing strawberries it was in a, a square foot garden in Florida they did very well <laughs> and that was probably in year about 2009 if you want to search back through my channel at my first garden that's when I was just trying to learn how to grow things well I put a lot of strawberry plants in that one four by four bed and it just took over and then I realized that I couldn't grow anything else in there I was kind of new to gardening and you know strawberries are something that can come back for you every year so if you want something that you're going to grow and then eat it and then pull it out and plant something else that's not going to be the strawberry plant for you You'll, the best place I think personally to grow strawberries is somewhere in your yard um, that you just want to put something there um, but it's not someplace where you want to just uh, grow something like in a nice garden bed I mean, if you put a square foot garden in your room in your um, yard it, you do a little bit of expense you know getting it set up and if you're just going to grow strawberries in it um, they'll grow great but you might want to have them somewhere else that way you can use your square foot garden bed for things like carrots and tomatoes and things like that that you're going to grow and pull out that's what I wanted to do anyway so anyway I am doing that at my other garden and I'm putting these in the ground at my other garden. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull a couple of these out. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and, I'm gonna get about six, I think. Okay, so I went ahead and I think I got ended up getting six or seven plants. Free strawberry plants, they'll go in my other garden. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and get some of these garlic chives. They're quite a bit different than um, the common chive or the onion chive that I just showed you that was uh, about to bloom. Uh, these are flat-leafed chive, like this. They have more of a garlic flavor, and um, they don't produce their flowers until later. I do enjoy the leaves. The flavor of the garlic chive is very good, I think. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and dig these up and they're very easy to plant all you do is just sprinkle you out some seeds and I think it's more of a clumping type of um, plant like the onion chive so you don't have to worry about them being invasive I mean they'll spread but they're not real aggressive invasive like a mint or something like that so I'm gonna go ahead and dig these up too okay so there we go this will give me a a lot of garlic chives right here just one of these but I'm gonna go ahead and take multiples Okay, I'm going to go ahead and take some of this radicchio with me as well, which is also a perennial. This is the first year I've grown it. I'm going to go ahead and dig this up too. Okay, here are my garlic chives, a radicchio, and strawberries. And then I'm going to get one more thing to take with me, and that will be this white swan echinacea. This area is just way too shady for the echinacea. It did not do well last year as compared to my other plants that get more sun in this garden. So I'm going to dig it up and give it a new home. Okay, so it ended up being a pretty nice little plant there.
Okay, it's 4.30 in the afternoon now, and I just want to walk through the garden and do a quick, probably about a two-minute tour to kind of show you what kind of things I'm growing. Um, and that way it'll give you an idea how things are doing in my zone 6B. Okay, these are sugar snap peas. They are just climbing right up the little trellis there. They're doing very well. Uh, this is just some lettuce mix called mescaline mix that I just sprinkled some seed out. So a lot of different, it's just a variety of different greens. Uh, I've shown you some rapini a little while ago. This is a spinach. I've been harvesting quite a bit of spinach. I like the baby leaves. This one here is getting a little bit big so I can uh, just harvest the outside leaves. That's how I've been doing that. Chives, Brussels sprouts, lots of Brussels sprouts this year. Of course, again, some more rapini that I showed you earlier. More sugar snap peas, Napa cabbage, chervil, and a French tarragon. The gray shallots are doing pretty good over here. And then over there are the red Norland onions. And more shallots here. Gray shallots are doing great. And all through this bed, even though you can't probably see much of it, is a lot of dill. And it will be beautiful in about a month dill and cilantro and then I showed you the strawberries I have some Armenian I think it's called porcelain garlic down there doing pretty good more red onions there just Greek oregano over here and garlic chives more garlic a lot of garlic more sugar snap peas and then the cilantro, and then I've succession planted the cilantro, so there's some more there. And then chervil right here. I was planting that everywhere this year. I want to make sure I get that. And I have some what's called a wasabi arugula over there. And then some dinosaur kale, or like a black kale. I have some uh, Italian parsley. I have succession planted that as well. Because my, for some reason, my Italian parsley seems to bolt on me a lot here in the first year. So I'm going to do a backup planting this year. And green onion. I've got a little succession planting that. And then here's a peek at my potatoes. They're looking really nice. Okay, so it's a little cold out here. I think it's about probably 60 um, 62 degrees and it's windy so I'm going to head on in and I hope you guys are having a wonderful time out there digging in your gardens. Have a beautiful day.